I started my channel um, like the end of July last year, um, which means that I was a bit late to do this tag. Um, and I'm so excited to do it for the first time because it's literally like a booktube staple and it just feels wrong that I haven't done it yet. Hello, my name is Miranda. Um, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, it's great to have you here. Today I'm going to be doing the um, mid-year book free cap tag. Very exciting. Um, I'm, I, love, I love watching these so I'm very excited to do it. You may have noticed that I said I was uploading every Thursday and this is not going up on Thursday um, because I mean various reasons the last few days have been a bit mad so I didn't have time to film um, but I'm here now. So the first question is the best book you've read so far this year um, and actually this is quite hard not for a good reason because I've read loads of amazing books but actually because I've had like a good decent load of books that I've read but not a lot of them have been like absolutely amazing um so I've only given about five or six books five stars so far this year um which is out of about almost 40 but I think the best book I've read this year is My Name Is Why by Lem Sisse um which I read back in January or February um and I listened to the audiobook um and it made me feel <laughs> so many things. So it's Lem's memoir um, telling of his childhood um, growing up in care um, and kind of with various different families and it's just heartbreaking and beautifully written and the audiobook is absolutely incredible. But I think an honourable mention has to go to um, My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell because that book is incredible. The way that you get inside the narrator's head um, and all the complexities and difficult stuff that's going on in there is just incredible and I don't think I've ever read anything like it. Um, so yeah, that is a close second. Question two is the best sequel you have read so far this year. Um, now I, <laughs> I like series when I read them but I'm really shit at carrying on with them so often what will happen is I will read the first book in a series and then I will just leave the rest. I start series with the best of intentions but um, often it'll get to like you know a year later I'm like oh I never read that sequel maybe I should do that at some point soon. So the only sequel that I've read so far this year is Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo um, which is a sequel to Six of Crows um, and I loved it. It was excellent and everything I could have wanted from a sequel I had the best time reading it. It was amazing. Question three is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to so as ever um with all the books about you know what haven't you read what do you want to read there are so many oh my god so let's just go through it okay um Sorrowland by River Solomon um Detransition Baby by Tori Peters um Mrs Death Mrs Death by Selena Godden although I started listening to the audiobook of that about an hour ago and it's great so far. The Manning Tree Witches by A.K. Blakemore which I did have an arc for on NetGalley but then I missed the archive date and it disappeared and I didn't realise it was so sad. And then basically just the entire Women's Pride long list. Um, I think Transcendent Kingdom is still the only one that I have read um, although I am currently reading The Vanishing Half because I am so behind. Question four is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Um, so for this I have two, again, because I can't choose. Um, firstly is Sarah Moss's new book. Um, I can't remember what it's called um, and I don't even know when it's coming out. I've just seen that some people on Instagram have arcs and I want it. I want it so bad. I'm desperate to read it. And then secondly, um, Jen Campbell's new book. Um, what's it called? The Sister Who Ate Her Brothers, which sounds amazing. Um, I still need to pre-order it, but I will definitely do that um, because it sounds wonderful. Um, it's basically a collection of retold fairy, fairy tales, but illustrated, all kind of fun and cool. And I love Jane Campbell's writing, so I'm very excited for that. Question five is biggest disappointment. Um, and this is the only book that I have with me. Um, and it is without doubt just not my laptop, um, Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. 
I was so hopeful for this. I was so hopeful. I thought, this sounds amazing. I love Frankenstein. I love, you know, like, weird retellings of things. Um, I love kind of slightly sci-fi, um, speculative type stuff. And this just sounded incredible. Um, but it was not. <laughs> Basically, there is a trans character in this, um, and they are not treated as a real human being, um, not fleshed out at all, and just a really poor representation of um, what being trans is. Um, I mean, as far as I know, I've talked about this in a few videos, so I'm just gonna pop it down now because I don't want to think about it anymore. Question six is the biggest surprise, um, and this has to go to um, the Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams, um, which I was very hopeful for because it's um, a kind of historical fiction about um, the creation of the Oxford English Dictionary, and that sounded right up my street. Like, I love historical fiction, I love books about language. It sounded great, but I was really quite um, hesitant to sort of hype it up in my mind because I was thinking I often don't like the historical fiction that I read. Like, a lot of the historical fiction that I read I don't love, but when I do get it right and I do find the one that I love, I really love it. And that was what the Dictionary of Lost Words was. Um, it wasn't a perfect book um, and there are things about it that I wasn't a huge fan of, but overall it's a really great time and I really really enjoyed it. Question seven is your favourite new author from this year? Um, either um, a debut author or new to you, um, and I am not sure about this answer really, but I think I have to go with James Baldwin um, because I read Giovanni's Room um, and it, it blew me away honestly, and again like that was another one that could have been my best book of the year so far because it really was absolutely incredible. Um, and the only, only reason it's not is because I think I need to reread it and go back to it um, to get like the most I can out of it. Um, but yeah, I've read um, If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin before, so technically he's not a new to me author, but I really feel like that reading experience didn't count because I just didn't appreciate it. And yeah, I'm, I'm so excited to go and discover all of his writing now because he's incredible. Question eight is newest fictional crush. Um, and this is a funny question because everyone is always like, oh, I don't get fictional crushes or they just answer it. Um, and I, <laughs> I don't really get crushes on real people, let alone fictional ones. So I don't really have an answer for this. I don't have anything against having fictional crushes, like love fictional characters, do it. Like, why not? But I'm not really a crushed kind of person at all. Um, especially given that the books that I read are mostly about horrible people. Um, so question nine is newest favourite character. Um, and for this I have to go with um, either Gifty from Transcendent Kingdom or bonus two, um, Hero and Roni from um, America is Not the Heart. Um, so Gifty because I really really related to her um, in the sense that she feels like a sort of, she's a caretaker um, and looks after people. Um, she's a caretaker in the sense that she looks after people, not in that she is a caretaker professionally. Um, that wasn't clear. Um, but she, yeah, she looks after people and then kind of struggles to look after herself, um, but really throws herself into her work. Um, she's a um, neuroscientist, I think, um, and does research on mice around um, reward seeking behaviour and just the way that she kind of really is driven into her work with such a passion to find answers and um, find what she needs in that I was something that I kind of related to a lot um, and I think that she's a really really interesting complicated character with how much she sort of questions everything um, and is quite anxious. Anyway, I just I loved her and I really related to her a lot. And then Hero and Roni um, I'm putting together because it's mostly their relationship that I love and I love how it develops. Um, so in America is not the heart, um, Hero is 
um, a Filipino woman who goes over to live with some family in the US um, and one of those family members is Roni who is about, I think she's about six or eight or something like that um, and they develop this kind of really adorable relationship um, and it's very cute and I love them so much and Roni is cooler than I'll ever be um, so there's that. Question 10 is a book that made you cry um, and I have three for this um, because I don't want to say this one because that would be incorrect because more than one book has made me cry. Um, so My Name Is Why, again it's incredible, ripped my heart out and stomped on it a little bit. Um, Crooked Kingdom because if you know you know all I'm gonna say is boat boats 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 not in a happy sense oh my god but in a happy sad a happy sad H happy sad is what gets me like if it's a happy moment but you know what the characters have had to go through to get to that happy moment and you know what it means to them and it's kind of like bittersweet that's the shit that gets me and then nightingale point by luann goldie which is a beautiful book and very sad and yeah there are moments in that book that I don't think I will ever forget um because they're so goddamn heartbreaking <laughs> question 11 is a really hard one for me because it's a book that made you happy and I do not read that many happy books <laughs> but I think the one that made me the most happy was Homie by Danae Smith um this is um Danae Smith's second collection of poetry um and I loved it so much. It's all about friendship and love and just it, you can just feel like the palpable love and, and adoration for people like just it's it's so beautiful and it made me so happy. I mean there are sad moments in it too but yeah it's 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 just it's just lovely like celebrations of people and mm, I loved it. Question 12 is the most beautiful book um, you have either bought or received so far this year um, and this is one that I don't have with me so I'm gonna have to <laughs> get someone to send me a clip to show you how beautiful it is um, but it's This One Sky Day by Leonie Ross. Oh my god. I mostly bought this because of its cover, I'll be honest. I heard that it was good and I saw that it was beautiful and I was like I don't need any more, thank you. I really don't even know what it's about, like I can't remember, but I'm so in love with it already. I'm so far up this book's ass already just because of its gorgeousness. I would die for this book, I wouldn't, that's dramatic, but my god. Then the last question is what books do you need to read by the end of this year? All of them. Oh my god, I have so many books to read, it's actually ridiculous. Um. But my main priorities right now are um, the books that I have on NetGalley because I need to get to them. So um, what even are they? One second. So those are um, The Light Streamed Beneath It by Sean Hitchens, which is, um, I think, a memoir. I'm not entirely sure what about. I can't remember, but I need to read that soon because it runs out in about a week. So... And then the other two are another memoir called Free um, by Leia E.P. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and then a book called Paul by Daisy Lafarge. Um, and I can't remember what either of them about, are about either, but they sound fun because I requested them. I don't know. And then the other book that I just really need to read already is The Vanishing Half um, by Brooke Bennett because I feel like I'm the only person left alive who hasn't read that book and... It's getting a bit ridiculous to be honest. Um, I have started it, I am reading it currently, but still, it's still going on here because I uh, anything could happen. And that last question leads us quite nicely onto um, my current TBR number, which is not going down as quickly as I'd like it to be. <laughs> it's so annoying. It is currently this. Woo! I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's 118 because I'm filming and uploading this on the same day and unless I magically read 300 pages of The Vanishing Half today it's gonna stick with being 118 which 
it's not where I want it to be but it's fine it's happening it's fine so that is the mid-year book freak out tag um that was fun wasn't it wasn't that fun oh let's do this again sometime I don't know what's happening also just quickly before I go um my booktube anniversary is coming up oh my god on the 31st of July it will be one year exactly since um I uploaded my first video I'm not sure what I'm gonna do to celebrate that yet I might just eat a massive birthday cake and live stream it like Bruce from Matilda and you can all sit there in the comments being like yes eat that chocolate cake that sounds good but if you have any ideas um for things I could do to celebrate one year on this delightful platform um yeah let me know um and also please just say hi to me in the comments because I like replying to people and it's fun anyway I'm gonna go. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you soon.